and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Romans 12, 1 and 3, 1 through 3, it simply says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and accept holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. I'm grateful today, and I'm thanking the Lord for all things. My message today is coming from the thought that the thought is behind it all should be a life. Behind it all should be a life. I am persuaded and I'm often we talk about behind it all, but most of the time that can encompass so many things. It could encompass uh, how we you know, our status in the world. It can encompass um, our title. Many of us have titles, whether we're in the church and outside the church. Many of us have a certain persona that we carry. We have influence, many of us have great influences, and we are surrounded, we are surrounded ourselves surrounded with uh, arenas. We are in certain arenas where people have their ear to what we say. Um, sometimes I believe that we get a little too caught up in what people hear about us versus in what they see how we are living. I believe today that we, going back to that, that part, behind it all, um, as human beings, we have certain statuses, certain influences, certain arenas that we have influences over people, places, and things. But at the heart of the matter is that we must strive to have a life no matter what realm, what wave, what arena, what phase of life, or, or what aspect, that's a better word to say, of life, of our lives. I believe that in this time that we are in, that if there was never a time to be really living for God is now. People need hope, but they also need demonstration. They also need to be able to see us as kids. If we're claiming to be God's people, we must also be at a place where we are living for him. I believe that in this time, in this season that we're in, if there was never a time where people need to see us, see Jesus in people, it's now. I believe that if there was never a time, that if there was ever a time, and we are living in the last day, these are the beginning of sorrows, this is the time now where if we're talking about hope, then we need to have hope enacted and walked out in our lives. I believe that now is the time that we as God's people must strive and like never before to be the people that he is calling for in these last evil days. I still believe that the scripture said that if my people who are called them by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said I will forgive their sins and I will heal the land. So he's letting you know his people. And if we're striving to be his people, uh, we must have a life behind what we say, how we act, and what we do. I believe that uh, to a certain extent, this is why we somewhat got, a, some of the church had got a bad name to a certain extent because of some of the, the, some of the things that were in the forefront. Um, sometimes we can have billing, 
but sometimes the, the but sometimes the thing that follows the building, the billing, sometimes doesn't meet, sometimes it doesn't equate to what the billing went out for. I believe that for us as the people of God now, we must do all that we can now to have a life. We will not make heaven our home without a life. We will not be able to go through this tribulation and these trials and dilemmas that we must face as the body of Christ if we don't have a life that goes, that accompanies what we are. It's not just enough to say that we are this and we don't do it. The Bible says, I believe the scripture talks about that to, for us not to be hearers only of the word, but we must strive to be doers of the word. And so it is important for us not to be hypocrites, just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes of Jesus' day that said, taught, and preached one thing, but lived, acted, and behaved another way. And so we as God's people must strive today because we must realize that we want to make heaven our home. It is not just enough today just to live in this life, because if we have hope only in this life, we are men most miserable. So it's important today that we must have a life behind our status. We must have a life. It's not just enough to be on social media, and I'm on social media. I, I, I enjoy it. I, I operate in it. It's one of our phases of ministry. But I also know that that alone is not enough. That we must have a life, a lifestyle, a godly life, a godly lifestyle that accompanies the post. Why post something and we don't live it? Why uh, put a status up and our life, our godly status is in the toilet? Why put something up and say that we are for God, but then turn around and then our actions, our character, our behavior is totally opposite of what we had posted. And this is why there is so much hypocrisy. This is why we go into the realm of hypocrisy, where you have actors. That's what a hypocrite is, someone that's an actor, someone that plays a part. And when that scene or when that event is over, they go back to being what they are. Are. We must understand that we are supposed to be in Christ. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so we must understand that God is calling for his people to come up higher. Even in this time of this plague, this pestilence that we are in, he is calling his people to come up higher. He is calling us to come up to a higher level. He is calling us not just to go to the pulpit, but he's calling us in to, to make a change, a 180 degree turn in our lifestyle, in our ways of reacting, our behavior, our character, our ways of thinking. It's important that we don't get caught up in the, the, the Bible speaks of how, I believe the scripture said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. It is important that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds with the power of God's word. The power of his word is the thing that's going to keep us. His word is like a lamp unto my feet. His word is going to be the thing that's needed, the antidote, the remedy that's going to be needed to cure the world of the, those that, that are in the world and will accept God's will, will be that will be the cure that will help us to not only get over the issue of sinness in our lives, but will also cause us to be able to go back with him. And so we are here today. So I said in the message, I said behind it all should be a life. We have to give God a life. We, that's why the scripture said that let your light so shine that, 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 that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. You got to remember this is not about you and I. This is not about us trying to collect brownie points. This is not about us trying to prove uh, who's better and who can do this and who can do that. But we want to please the Lord. We want men and women to be able to see our good works and to see the things that we're doing. Not that we're looking to be seen, but we need to be seen doing the work. And it's important today that I truly believe that God is calling for his people to come to a place in God where it's time to part pleasing the Lord now. I believe that in this last day, more than ever, 
we as his people need to be able to be the light of the world. There is darkness that surrounds us, the plague, not only the plague, the corruption that's in this world, the sinfulness in this world. The world, because of sin, is in darkness. But that's why he has called us to be the light of the, the, light of the world. We have, he has called us to be the light that shineth in darkness. He has called us to be the reflectors of the those that bring the glory of his name, the glory of his kingdom into this ungodly and wicked world. And so we, beloveds, must understand. I'm just going to read a verse or two of scripture to you. He says here that he that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth light. Righteousness and honor. This is in Proverbs, the 21st chapter, in verse 21. It says here, but thou, O man of God, flee these things. Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. That's in 1 Timothy 6 and 11. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that he that shall he also reap. Galatians 6 and 7. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6 and 33. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable unto the Lord than sacrifice. Proverbs 21 and 3. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Galatians 6 and 9. Finally, I'm going to read one more. It says and here, See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. That's in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 15. Why well, read these all to you? Because it's showing you the different aspects of the lifestyle that the believer must have in our dealing with each other, in how we deal with the world, how the, the integrity that we must possess as believers, the mindset that we must have when it comes to pleasing God, the, 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 the commitment and the determination that we got to have if we're going to not only make heaven our, our home, but if we're going to make an impact in the society that we live in. You must understand, people of God, that today is the day that we need to be right with God. The world, even though there's a, a sound of hatred towards us, but you must understand there's also a cry. And the cry is, where is the church? Where is God's people? Where is this great deliverer that they speak of? Where is this Jesus that they talk about? Well, children of God, we must be the, the carriers of his glory. We must be the ones that allow Christ into our lives so that the world can see him. We must be the one, the living epistles that the Lord talks about through Paul the Apostle. And being a living epistle means that you are a living Bible, a living one that's alive, not just written on a piece of paper, not just written on table tablets of stone, not just marked on a piece of papyrus, but one that can demonstrate the power of God. One that can demonstrate the love of God. One that can demonstrate how God operates in his kingdom. And so what I'm here to tell you today, I'm here to let you know is that behind it all, you got to have a life. Behind it all, behind our statuses, behind uh, the who we know, behind the uh, 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 influence that we may have. End of the day, make sure you have a life. I'm getting ready to close now, but I'm here to tell you today that at the end of the day, no matter who you are, make sure you there's a life behind the name. Make sure there's a life behind the status. Yeah.
life behind who we are. It's time to have a life. Some of us have been in church and we're playing, we've been playing with church for so long. And now that this is happening, we have been caught off guard. Now that this has happened, we don't know what to do. Now that this has happened, we don't have an answer. But the Lord, even in this, is saying, I still love you. Even in the state that you're in, sometimes the state that we're in, God is still looking beyond our faults. And he still sees the need. The question is, now that God has seen the need, do you see that you need him? And so people of God, he is calling us. It's time to get real with God. Not just it's their fault, not who the hater is, not saying, you know, I don't go because of this, that, or whatever. Let me tell you this, you will have hypocrites wherever you go. You, they are hypocrites on your job. They are hypocrites in the street. They are hypocrites in the club that you go to. They are hypocrites everywhere. But you still find yourself with them. Stop allowing the devil to put a stumbling block before you. You know what you have to do. You know God has called you. You know God has been calling you out the world, but you keep throwing excuses after excuses after excuses. It's dumb, it's this and that, but God is saying, stop worrying about them and focus on me. Behind who you are, you must give God a life. Behind America. You might be somebody, a somebody that's in the world. You might be a somebody that's in the church. But behind it all, you must have a life. You must have spiritual substance. You must have the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. You must know Him because that's what's going to count. And so I admonish you wherever you may be. You may be in Missouri. You may be in Kansas. You may be in Illinois. You may be in this Midwestern region. You may be in the Texas in the South. You may be in New York in the Northeast. You may be in California in the West, but wherever you are, you may be in Africa. You may be in, in, in India. You may be in China. You may be in Canada. You may be in Britain. You may be in Ireland. You may be in Iran. You may be in Australia, but wherever you are, it's time to repent. Lord, we are standing here in need. We have reached, we have gotten to our breaking point. We are at a point where we have run into a brick wall called life. And we are not able to fight on our own. Our status and position of who we are is not able alone to, to carry us through.
an overflow. Help us today, Lord, to try you. Help us, Lord, to take block out every divisive voice that's in our lives. Cut off every divisive voice that's telling us that there's no need to do that. That that's not necessary. God, give us a mind to trust your word and to take the measure of faith that you've given us and be able to use it that we might glorify your name. Touch us now in Jesus' name. We pray for the sick on today. Those that need healing. Those that need deliverance. We speak deliverance right now. Even where we are at, God, you have the power to hear our prayers and hear our cries. And you're able to send deliverance to this place and that place and over here and over there. No matter who it may be, whether it's in New York, whether it's Illinois, whether it's California, whether it's Texas, whether it's Kentucky, whether it's Tennessee, whether it's Montana, whether it's Georgia, whether it's Florida, whether it's New Mexico, everyone is crying out today, crying out for healing, crying out for deliverance, crying out for awakening. May God, some of our money is running out, resources are running dry. But Lord, you're the God of more than enough. You're the God that knows that's, a, that's the owner of a, of a thousand hidden candles on a hill. Lord, you know what we need. You know how to bring us out. Help us to trust your name, to believe your word, to believe that you're still in control, to believe that you're still large and in charge, to believe that you're the God of more than enough, to believe that you're the Lord that's all of our needs according to your riches and glory. You said that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. We shall not want if we make you our shepherd. We shall not go in lack if we make you our shepherd. We shall not die. We shall not be what we not fall by the wayside if we make you our shepherd. And if we do withhold death, we know we have an eternal reward. We know that God is will cause us to make it into heaven. We know that we will find eternal rest with you. In the name of Jesus, touch us on today. Give us strength to make it. Give us endurance. Those of us that remain, help us to stay encouraged. Help us, Lord, to maintain our fervor and our zeal, godly zeal and desire. Don't let us allow the devil to, to steal our joy. You said if we have no joy, we don't have any strength. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. And even in this, we will say thank you. Even in this crisis, we will lift your name up. Even in this, you're still worthy of the praise. Even in this, you are still worthy to be glorified. Even in this, we still lift up the holy name of Jesus. Even in this, we will say thank you, Lord. Even in this, God, you're still worthy of the praise. Even in this, we will trust you. Even in this, we will begin to continue to say, Lord, you are our help, our, our shield, and our buckler. In the name of Jesus. And God, we say thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. We speak those things that are not as though they are. We thank you for another chance. We thank you for those. We speak in faith, those that have reached out, those that have lifted up holy hands and have received you on today. We believe that God, they are what they are saved, that they have been filled with the Holy Ghost. Wash them with your blood, touch them now. Lord, send deliverance, restoration, and healing for your people everywhere. Heal our psyche, heal our faith, heal the morale, heal us. In the name of Jesus, let your blood cover, let your will be done even now. In Jesus' name we pray.